everyone, my name is Lizzie Martell and I'm an artist and an illustrator and I'm also a mum and I'm in lockdown with my three-year-old daughter called Iris and she, Hello. she is and we are here together and we're going to teach you how to draw and paint our favourite fruit and vegetables. This one's especially for little ones. Here we go, we've got our, what's this one? Broccoli. Broccoli. Um, Satsuma. Satsuma. Apple. Apple. Pear, pear and a potato. A potato. We had to have a, a second pear because um, someone needed an emergency pear. So I'm going to be using my watercolour paper. I've got my watercolour paints, I've got some water, a paintbrush and an outline pen. And I'm going to give Iris one of my outline pens, but a biro will do. And she's going to be using her standard kids paints with some water and actually if you don't have any paint in the house you could use felt it pens or crayons and she's just using normal paint paintbrush that I've got an old paintbrush and uh, some thin paper which we have in the cupboard. So if you have your pens grab your pen ready and we're going to draw our outline for our satsuma first which is our little orange satsuma. So get a pen and I want you to draw a really big circle. Can you draw a circle? Okay. So do a circle. Well, that's a really big circle, Iris. So you do your circle, and when you've done your circle, you're going to do I the stem. Orange island. It's gorgeous. So you're going to do a tiny <coughs> little stem. Can you do a stem at the top of your satsuma? That's it. And then you're going to do a star just underneath it. So you're going to do some. So the bottom of your stem is a star. So you're going to do some like a little star, that's absolutely beautiful. Then, all over your satsuma, there's some little dots. So you can start by drawing a few little dots on your satsuma. Can you do that? And that looks like the skin of a satsuma, which is really, really bumpy. So once you've done your circle, and you've done your stem, and you've drawn your dots, you're gonna get your orange paint. I'm not drawing in my dot. When you're ready, you can catch up, Iris. So get if you're orange paint, if you've got orange paint, if you haven't got orange paint, you can mix orange with red and yellow. So you can use lots of water and you can colour in your satsuma so it's beautiful and you're going to spread that orange paint all around your fruit. Because satsumas are a lovely orange colour, aren't they? That's it. So I'm going to leave a little bit of white on one side and I'm going to leave a little bit of white around the stem. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use more orange or I'm gonna use a darker orange, which I'm gonna mix a bit of red. And I'm gonna dab my paint on one side of my satsuma to give it a bit of depth. That's beautiful, Iris, you've done a lovely job. So when we've catching done our up. satsuma, are you catching up? When we've done our satsuma, you might want to paint your stem, and the stem is usually green. So if you can get your green paint. If you colour them like me. Or you can colour them in like Iris with your crayons. And then you can draw your stem. It doesn't matter if it mixes a little bit. It all adds to the effect of watercolour. And then you have a nice green stem. Then we're going to take back our pens and we're going to draw our next fruit, which is going to be an apple. So I want you to do a circle that's a little bit bigger than your satsuma. So I'm going to do one next to it. I'm not finished. When you're ready, you can catch up with us. I'm not finished my satsuma. So there we go. I want you to do a very big circle compared to your satsuma. And actually, you can even do a little dip at the top if you wanted to. But you've got your big circle, and this is going to be our apple. Look, finished. Beautiful. Da-da! Mummy, da-da! Da-da, indeed, it's beautiful. So now you've done your outline for your apple, what you're going to draw I'm is a small leaves. semicircle at the Where top. Are the leaves? You're way ahead of us. You're getting creative. So do a semicircle at the top of your apple, and then what you're going to do is you're going to do a stem that comes out of that apple. Can you Apples have a beautiful stem. So now you're going to get your paintbrushes and you're going to get some water on your paintbrushes. And I'm going to do a green and a red apple. So you can get your reds to start with and mix some red on your palette and your paintbrush. 
and you might want to add a little bit of water here to get all around the apple. And you're going to start on one side of the apple by painting it a beautiful bright red. That's gorgeous colour, isn't it? And you're going to colour in one side red of your apple my red. Colour. Oh, it's one of my favourite colours too. It's a good power colour, isn't it? Superhero and for superheroes and superheroes eat apples because it makes them nice and strong and then so when you've done one half of your apple in red you might like to get a green on your paintbrush so pick your green paint make sure you wash your brush in the middle I love being strong like superheroes. Me too. <laughs> Apples turn people into superheroes. That's right, they do. So you're going to get your green paint and you can mix a little and bit of yellow. Pears, they turn you into little girls. <laughs> Pears are good too. So you're going to start by mixing your green and then you're going to, where you left off your red, you're going to mix your red and your green and then you're going to spread your paint all around your beautiful apple and the good thing about this is it makes it look really realistic because all that red and that green will mix and look beautifully like an apple and so you can paint and I'm going to leave a little bit of white by my stem again I'm not. that's okay you can do whatever you want it's your apple so don't have to copy me but if you want to you can have your half green and half red apple and where you've got your middle bit, it mixes. And what you can do is you can add a second layer of your red at the bottom to make that apple really rosy on one side, like we did with the satsuma. And then you can also do a few little red dots on your green to make it look like a real speckled red and green apple. And when you've done your apple skin, you're gonna do the stem. So my apple stem is a I light green. I need my red skin. Red stem, that's okay. Any color stem's fine, but I'm gonna do a light green stem. And you could even do a brown one, but that's my apple. So next, you're gonna pick up your pens when you've finished your apples, and we're going to draw our broccoli. The broccolis are a little bit trickier because there's no circles, but we're gonna do a long stem and then we're gonna do a curly top. So, if you take your pens and you draw a long line, and oh, then mommy, another... I want to do a different one. You can do a different line if you want to. Another stem, so you do two lines, and then when you've done your two lines, you're going to do Look, lots of semicircles at the top. That's mine. That's beautiful. That's my different. So you're going to do lots of semicircles and it's going to look a little bit like a tree. And what you can do when you've done your tree, it looks like a tree, but it's not, it's actually our broccoli. Join up the bottom of your broccoli and then you can do lots of semicircles inside, inside your leaves of your broccoli. So there's a lovely green here I'm mixing with some yellow. So if you don't have a light green, you can add some yellow to your green and make it light. And then you're going to paint your stem a lovely light green. That's it. Iris has decided her broccoli is going to be black. And that's okay. You can make your broccoli whatever colour you want. So add your green. And then you're going to make a darker green for the leaves. So you get your darker green. And then you're going to do some fun swoopy, swoopy paint all over the top of your broccoli. And it's going to look much more free and so it doesn't matter if you leave any white bits we're making a party we're making pictures for Betty's birthday tomorrow <laughs> my cat's birthday is tomorrow so yes we are making pictures for my cat's birthday so there's um a darker green and you're gonna dab sure your she, broccoli she will love it. i'm sure she will so who are you going to paint your pictures for you're going to paint them for somebody in your family um uh, betty you're painting it for the cat iris and then you add some extra dabs all over the top of your broccoli to make that really stand out strong. So Iris is still doing her broccoli and while you're waiting for your broccoli to dry, we can draw our next vegetable and this is a potato. And it's a very big round sort of a squashed circle potato. So we're gonna do, with our pens, you're going to take your pen and you're going to draw a circle a bit like you did up here but it's going to be a lot more squashed so I'm going to do one a bit no. like this oh that's a beautiful broccoli Can you know how you wash so pick up your paintbrush you might need to get your clean water 
And our potato is like a, a yellow, but it's a little bit more brown than yellow. So I'm going to mix yellow and I'm going to add some brown to my potato to make it a little bit more potato colored and less like a banana. So when you've got your light brown for your potato, which is mixed with your yellow, you can mix any color potato you want, you're going to paint in your potato. And there's a fun bit we're gonna do in a minute for your potato. In fact, my potato looks a bit yellow, but never mind. I'm gonna add a bit more brown and keep going. And a bit more brown, because this is a very big potato. Keep going with your potato painting. And if you need to spread your paint around with some water, it makes it go further. And don't worry about any white bits. Just keep going. And then when you've done your lovely yellow potato, you're gonna get your brown paint and you're going to mix it a little bit with your color you've already got. And you're gonna do so many dabs. So this is where the speckles on the potato are gonna look really realistic and potato-like. So keep dabbing your paint all over your potato. So you've got a spotty speckled potato because potatoes are not one colour. They've got lots of little speckles, which I'm going to show you right now. Those speckles are what we're doing with our browns. And you can't go wrong with this. You've got to keep going. You can add brown here. Look, look at my dress. Very nice, dear. So what you can do is when your potatoes dry, you can get your paintbrush again and you can get more brown on your paintbrush and you can do even more speckles over the top of your first speckles to give it a bit more definition. And I always like to do it down one side so it looks like the potato is a little bit 3D. And that... Look, I made dark blue. Iris has got a blue potato. So whatever potato colour it is, enjoy doing your speckles. So we're gonna do our pear next while Iris is finishing off her potato. So we're gonna start maybe by drawing the pointy top and then you're gonna do your round circle to finish. So it's like a satsuma circle, but with Look a point on the top. That's beautiful. So when you've drawn your circle with a point on the top, you're gonna to do a stem coming out of the top and that looks like a little stem. And you've got your pear. So get your paint brushes and you're going to do, you can use the same green you did before, that you mixed before, because our pear is a light green, or you can add a little bit of yellow to your green to make it a really light green. You can yellow. see the green. So yellow and dark green make a light green. And you're gonna color in your pear a lovely light green again, similar to how we did on our broccoli stem. Oh, got me. And don't forget, you can always add water to your paint to spread it around a little bit so you don't have to use lots and lots of paint on your brush. And when you've done your light, light green, you're going to use the brown from your potato and you're going to do speckles again on your pear. So pears have lots of different colours, but they're mostly a little bit brown and a little bit green and speckly, just like your potato. And I'm going to do a few green speckles as well to make it look super cool. So do lots of speckles, lots of dabs with your paintbrush with lots of paint. And I like to do a little bit of brown at the top. And then what we're going to do is our stem. And our stem is a brown on a pear. So get a lovely brown colour. And you can do your stem a super beautiful brown. And there we have it. We've got all of our fruit and vegetables. And we've got our satsuma, our apple, our pear, our broccoli, and our potato. But there's one more, a carrot. Oh, we haven't done a carrot today. We'll do that next time. So you might have finished your painting and you might want to stop now, but if you want to do a bit of an extra thing, you can draw some cute little faces. So with my pen, I'm going to draw some fun little faces on our fruit and vegetables. For my orange, I think he's really sweet and happy. So I'm gonna do him a little eye. I'm gonna be careful not to smudge everything. So everything should be dry before you start drawing on your watercolor again. And then I'm gonna do a little smiley face. So he's really, really cute. I think my apple is going to have some happy little eyes. So to do happy eyes, you do upside down. 
semicircles, just like that. And then you do a smile. You could do eyelashes on your on your on your uh, fruit and vegetables. And then I'm going to do my broccoli because I think he's got um, surprised eyes. So he's going to do two little eyes for him, and you've got some eyebrows. And he's really cute, so you're going to do a smile. They're all really happy because they're fruit, and so they're healthy. And for my potato, ooh, I don't know how to do my potato. Let me see, I've got to have, um, where could his eyes be? You could do your eyes wherever you want. Maybe he's got a really big head and his eyes are down here. So we could do some dots for his eyes. I could do hair, that's a great suggestion. Maybe I should do some hair. But you could do a smiley face. You could even do some little legs. So should we do some little legs for Mr. Potato? I don't think these skinny little legs would actually hold his body, but it'd be quite fun. Maybe he needs bigger feet. So you could do some cute little feet, and you can also do some, I think he needs some eyebrows. Oh, he's looking naughty. And then we've got my pear. So he's my last one. I think this should be a little lady. So we should do some eyes down here. Maybe she's looking at her friends. And a smile for her. And you could do, we could do um, some eyelashes for her. Oh, they're so sweet. So these are our little fruit and vegetables. And the last thing you can do, if you're still wanting to do some more on your picture, is you can give them all rosy cheeks. So I'm gonna give my apple some rosy cheeks by painting on top of my picture some sweet little red cheeks. And they can all have rosy red cheeks, or you can do cheeks the color of their body. So I'm going to do my potato yellow cheeks sort of browny yellow cheeks and they're really sweet it just makes them a little bit more characterful to give them rosy cheeks and my pear's got to have a rosy cheek and they're like little circles on top of your picture just finishes them off really nicely and tiny little cheeks for these guys for my broccoli and lastly we should give our satsuma happy orange cheeks He's really sweet, isn't he? And now, after all that fruit and vegetable painting, I think I need to go and get my lunch. So I really hope you enjoyed drawing and painting your favorite fruit and vegetables today and that you've had a lot of fun getting creative. Do share your pictures with me and I'd love to see what you've come up with. And also, you can go into the kitchen and find anything you've got at home that you can also try and draw and paint. So just have some fun getting creative and see you soon.